Welcome back to another video. Today, as promised last time, we'll be going over how to make options on a slash command with the slash command builder uh, using discord.js version 14. So we're going to add a user option. What this is, is if I do dot option, you should see all these other things pop up. So you got a role option, user option, number option, String option, boolean, channel, integer, attachment, mentionable, etc. We'll go over all those in due time. For today, we're adding a user option though. And I like to indent, which is what it's called when you use tab. So that's how you do this is you add the tabs to your code. I think it makes it a lot more organized. I might change the spacing of the tab soon though. It gets a little bit cluttered or super big when you uh, have a lot of lines of code. Anyway, we're gonna call this the user. We're gonna set the description of this option to be the user to say hi to. And we're gonna set this required or Let's set it to not be required. So you can either set it to be required or not to be required. That's up to you. I'm going to set it to be not required. Because now that we are here, we have the command name is equal to hello. We can say if <clears throat> interaction dot options dot get user we're gonna call it user same thing as up here actually let's just try and fetch it right here what we can say is if there is no user user equals interaction dot user. So if they don't specify a member, it'll just say hello to themselves. Let's see if this works. No, it does not. Oh, did I set it to a Boolean? Oh, whoops, I set that to text instead of a Boolean. So just false, my bad. Guess I'm still tired. Okay, it's logged in, slash hello. If we don't specify anything, it should continue to say it to myself. Hello, we're gonna add a user option. We're gonna make it say hello to itself. Hello, it's a tutorial bot. So I guess it worked pretty simple. Another thing we can do to make it even simpler is we can just make it so that if for whatever reason it can't get the user from the interaction, then it's going to just grab the user, which is whoever sent the interaction. And we can change this to const because after this line of code, we're not gonna change it ever again. These two signs equals an or. It's uh, ne right next to the backslash, you just gotta use shift. And then two of them, that represents or. So if this doesn't end up working, then you can use this instead. All right. This should work still. We do hello. It should respond with hello golden dev. And then we do hello. We're gonna specify the user. We're gonna set it back to tutorial bot. Hello tutorial bot, super simple. That's how you use a user option. Now we can say, let's uh, make an echo command, I guess you can say. Echo equals new slash command builder, echo repeats repeats what you say set name text the text to repeat and we're going to set required to false so you don't have to well do you know what we're going to set it to true so you have to put in some text to echo. 
And now if we register this here, echo, Now if the command name equals echo, we're going to get the string is what it's called. The string is in text, it's a line of text. And we're going to get the text specifically because as you can see, we can set it to text. You're just getting it by name basically. And then we have to get that interaction.reply and you could do this if you wanted you could de say text but i'm just gonna get rid of all that and just say text like that now we go ahead and we do echo hello everyone oh right we have to change it to a string option my bad my bad hold on You know, I really shouldn't copy and paste stuff. It's just more confusing and troublesome than it's worth. Hello, everyone. There you go. We use the echo command. All right. So now you can get options from a user using the slash commands, and then you can respond accordingly. I think that's probably going to be it for this episode. Uh, what can we do next episode? I suppose we're getting close to needing to make a dynamic command handler. And as I mentioned earlier on in the series, and probably earlier this video as well, I can't remember if I did, because I'm recording most of these videos at the same time. Um, <clears throat> it's really annoying and takes a long time to repeat this line of code over and over again, and it gets really cluttered here in the index.js file. So I think next episode, the focus is going to be making a commands folder and filling that folder with commands. So let's say ping.js for example. And that way you won't have to specify that every time you make a new command, you got to go through here, you got to find where you put it in the command. And then you have to do the if the command name equals this, then do this, right? That takes a long time. So instead, next episode, instead of continuing on like this, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make it so you can have individual files. So we'll have a new file for echo.js. We'll have a new file for ping.js, echo.js, and what was the third one? Hello.js. And these will all just be these different things right here. I'm actually going to show you guys the basics right now. This is going to go into echo. And this is going to go into ping. And yeah. I think that's it for this episode. I gotta go now. Um, we're going to be going over how to make this work next episode. So that every time you make a new command, all you gotta do is make a file in the commands folder. And it'll automatically register the command and do all that other stuff for you. Alright, thanks for watching. I'm gonna go change the... Uh, token before I forget to before posting the video and I'll see you guys in the next episode like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye for now